Music by D-U-D-E. Speak black to me. Speak black to me, a dynamic space of black discourse where we engage in the process of elevating and transforming the mind. All right. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Okay, my name is Andrew Mendy. Uh, I am a final year political science student at the University of the Gambia. I was born in Brikama and I was, I'm from a Christian home. My dad is actually a priest in the Methodist Church and my mom works with the Methodist Church. So basically that's all about me and I'll allow my, my colleague to pre uh, introduce herself. Good afternoon once again. My name is Binat Roberts. I'm a student at the University of the Gambia, final year political science student. I was born and raised in Banjul, and I do a little bit of history writing about Banjul, and how to say I've, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for that wonderful question. Uh, when we talk about homecoming Gambia, basically it means not foreigners coming to the Gambia, but it means people of African descent coming back to their home to reconnect with their roots. So basically that's it. I, it, it keeps me thinking, it propels me to thinking when African diasporans living in the US and other parts of the world come back to the Gambia and people label them as foreigners or tourists. And I think that shouldn't be the case, but the case should be these people are people of African descent and they return to their home to reconnect with their roots and they should not be labeled as uh, foreigners or tourists. So basically, Homecoming Gambia, it's a festival whereby people of African descent living in the diaspora come back to their home, their roots, to learn about their cultures, to reconnect with their African people and make sure that they, they, they come up with viable solutions towards solving the African problems. So basically that's, that's, the, that's the thing, that's the concept about Homecoming Roots Festival. Thank you. Yes, so thank you so much. I, I, would, I, I would want to acknowledge the first presenter when he mentioned that our education system is, is more of Western values. Our education system is not, it does not reflect the African values. African values are not embedded in our education system. This education system was indoctrinated into the minds of the African people. And before colonialism, African people were living in a communal system whereby they share things together, their own properties, not like today that one will say, I own this property, it's, it's mine, it does not belong to you, and all that. So these are values, Western values, that are instilled in the African mind and it has controlled the African mind. So <clears throat> the African society during pre-colonial was living in this type of system whereby people, these values were so cherished, people eat together in the family. Uh, a handshake was seen as a sign of respect. Uh, people eat in the same big bowl. These are African values, but they are no longer existing because our minds have been indoctrinated by Western values, and this should not be the case. So the, 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 the most important thing that we as young people imagining to become scholars, African scholars, not Western scholars, <laughs> African scholars, <laughs> African scholars, uh, I, I, I read about uh, an African scholar in South Africa, that is Tabo uh, Mbeki, who was the president of South Africa. He came up with the concept of African Renaissance, that is uh, the rebirth of African culture. That is, uh, the, for Africa to thrive, for Africa to go further, it needs the involvement of the intelligentsia, that is those people who have learned, the, the scholars. So that is it. So what basically Tabo Mbeki is advocating for is to, for Africa to go back to its roots 
and learn about their culture and use those cultures to solve our societal problems. So basically, our African indigenous values are so rich and we need to appreciate it. We need, as young people, to embrace it so that we can redefine our own development than the Western development. <laughs> On my own perspective, I can see or say much of we embracing, we youths and Africans to embrace our heritage and our culture first before inviting others outside to come and embrace it. I was really puzzled when he said he cannot speak Wolof because he's not taught Wolof. He cannot speak Mandinka because he's not. I am also part of it. I've been born in Banju, but there's only one cultural language that I can speak, that is Wolof. And apart from that, it's English. And I feel so sad because I cannot speak Mandinka nor Fula. And I'm born and raised in the Gambia, born and raised in Africa. And when I go outside the diaspora, instead of me to learn my Mandinka or Fula, I tend to learn Spanish. I tend to learn Belgian because I want to be part of them. Why here I am part of them, but I do not want to be because I'm not taught to be so. So it is kind of being puzzled with how we are being raised and we should embrace these kind of things in our schools to learn and know what it means. Secondly, with our trade routes, our historical sites are not being visited by students. It mm -hmm. is very rare. I can personally say I've never been to a historical site apart from the Museum of Banjo, the Arch 22nd, and that of Lovell Square. Apart from that, I've never been to any cultural site. So how can I know what is happening in the Gambia? How can I embrace and tell someone outside to come and embrace that kind of culture when I am not well equipped with that kind of culture? So we need to read science ourselves, to bring back ourselves, to learn and be a testimony to everyone outside there. So I think it is important for us to come here and say what we feel and how to go about it in future. promote tourism because it's part of our second major income in the Gambia and it will pr promote unity. Unity in the sense that we are not like for example when you guys come in, I'll go outside the beach right now currently, if your accent doesn't define you, if you do not have an American accent or a, a British accent, they will tell you no, you are not coming to the beach. That's a form of discrimination that we're facing. It is part of us, it is what we are, this is part of us, this is, this is our beach. It's not nowhere outside the beach, it's our stuffs, as she said. And these are the things that needs to be done to embrace food, the food and culture that we share. Embrace food in our hotels, in our resorts, not outside cultures, and then we only say that we need, when you go to restaurants, you see food like, risotto, pizza, why not other local dishes to improve and enhance the culture of the Gambia and that of Africa. These are all Italians are coming, bringing all sorts of dishes around them. Why not all also Ghanaians to come, Nigerians to come, Ugandans from all part of Africa to come and embrace different kind of culture. Because culture is rich, is part and fiber of every nation and this is what we need to know to develop ourselves first. Mm. So what came to mind for me was that you could go in the U.S. and you can find an Italian restaurant, you can find a Chinese restaurant, but you cannot find in the United States an African restaurant in general. You understand know what I'm saying? You can't go to Los Angeles. You gotta go. You gotta face back in the cut somewhere. But I can find a Chinese restaurant anywhere, anywhere mm -hmm. right? I can go to a Chinese buffet at any given time. The fact that what you said is that you will not even come in my house and disrespect me. That speaks volumes. It's one thing to talk about global identity. 
which is a part of what you have to work with, right? But it's also to understand that you will not come in my house and disrespect me. So don't come bring in it mm -hmm. to my house. Mm -hmm. When you haven't even respected Dhamma, when you haven't respected Monjo, mm -hmm. when you haven't respected Yasa, you, uh, right? you haven't been it. You haven't respected Shu. Yeah. <laughs> so that's important. Uh, so uh, Andrew, you want to add to that? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much. So one way that the Homecoming Roots Festival can have an impact in the Gambia, positive impact, because when I say impact, it, it can make both negative and positive. So what positive, let me be specific, positive impact in the lives of the Gambians is uh, unity, like you rightly mentioned. Because those people living in uh, the different parts of the world, in the U.S., in America, come back to reconnect with their roots, to, to, to reconstitute with one another. In that connection, it builds, it's built, it builds and consolidates unity within and among Africans. And it's very fundamental for Africans, especially this Homecoming Roots Festival. When I was, uh, I never knew about this Homecoming Roots Festival. Dr. Kevin Washington texted me on WhatsApp and said, we would like to have you because you are a student leader in the University of the Gambia to come and speak about some of the challenges that uh, our education sector is facing. I told us, sir, okay, that won't be a problem. I would definitely love to attend the, 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 the program. So when I sat down, I said, homecoming, what does it basically mean? So uh, homecoming means that a person of African descent returning to his home, not a foreigner, so when these persons, when these people return to Africa and they reconnect with their indigenous people, that speaks volumes, that speaks humanity, that speaks uh, uh, unity, it promotes uh, development in a literal sense. So basically that's it. So I would like to talk about more on the, when I was doing, last semester I was doing a course called Comparative Ideologies and we talk about uh, some of the concepts, Western concepts. These are names, these are Western nomenclatures, not African names, like socialism. That's why I, I, I tend to read more of uh, the, the president, the past president of Tanzania, Julius Nyerere, mm -hmm. when he mentioned about the Ujama uh, system. Ujama basically means socialism. Uh, Julius Nyerere was trying to promote African values, African integration. That is why he introduced Ujama. Ujama basically means socialism. This is an African concept. So it's high time that Africans discard African, uh, Western concept and try to promote African concepts like Ujama and Ubuntu. This is a South African ideology that calls for unity. So this, high, this is a high time for young people, especially young people like uh, so many of us in this room, to promote African values, to reconnect with our roots and all that. So basically that's it. And I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. to say is that I feel privileged and honored to be here today. It is, it is a touching thing because when I was young I've heard about the root culture of festival, the song itself, now seeing it, that it has been reconnected again and recreated again, being fertilized by some Africans who were there from the diaspora coming back, it's a plus. It's like things are going back to normal. Because there are some other Africans, they don't come back to their roots. They will say they have never, Africa has never stood for me when I needed Africa to be there for me. When it comes to education, when it comes to capitalism in a state of like, I own myself. Africa has not provided any of my needs, nor of my wants. These are things that white people take in as for granted. We think that everything is normal in their lives, but they face anxiety. They face depression. These are psych mental health issues. But here in the Gambia or in every part of Africa, it's different because we socialize with each other. We embrace with each other. We love and care for each other. And this is not found outside there. So these are the things that we need to rekindle. And this Root Cultural Festival, I think, can bring back that love and unity.
also just to add just uh, a little bit of add up uh, when we talk about uh, looking at the University of the Gambia it's just of recent that I learned from news that the University of the Gambia is integrating local languages into their curriculum so this is a big plus because we are not privileged like Rachi mentioned since from childhood we are not privileged to visit historical sites so how can we learn and embrace our cultures when we don't visit these historical sites so it's very fundamental for young people at the grassroots level parents parents too are very important stakeholders in promoting african values because it starts from the grassroots level they need to instill these values in the young ones and all that so i would like to talk about uh, the issue of uh, there's a new form of colonialism that the white people are instilling in the African continent. You talk about uh, AIDS, foreign AIDS. These foreign AIDS come with conditionalities. And conditionality, they'll tell you, no, if you want, basically, maybe you're, maybe, let's, for example, I'm the president of the Gambia, and I went to Britain with IMF or World Bank, and I, World Bank wants to give me a loan. But the major challenge that I'm facing in my country is the education sector or the health sector. But when the IMF give me these war loans, they will tell me, no, don't put it in the education sector or the, 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 uh, the health sector. Put it in infrastructure or build a conference hall. Is that, is that logical? That is, not, that is not my major problem in my country. I know my country, I know my problems, and I am the one capable of handling those problems. You cannot determine where those loans are to be put. So uh, this issue of uh, African leaders need to revise this they need to be very careful with this issue of loans and aids they need they need to be very intelligent in order to outsmart this white supremacist yeah. so african these african aids these african loads come up with conditionalities like i will remember we did a course that is basically a human rights a democracy in africa when when the structural adjustment program was introduced in africa in the late 1980s that is they, they, they call it, they want to revive the African economy. So that's why they introduced this African, this structural adjustment program. And this structural adjustment program came with policies, came with conditionalities that do not reflect the African values. So, so many, I will, I will thank some of our past African leaders who outrightly debunked the structural adjustment program. They said, no, we cannot adopt this in our system because it does not suit, it does not reflect our African values but more it will create problems for us. They, they came up with conditions like devalue your currencies, retrench the civil service, for what? So that is why during the structural adjustment program, there was a serious, serious brain drain because it has impoverished the African continent. That Afri so many African scholars went to the US, went to different parts of the world, and it has really, uh, it has caused a lot of brain drain in the African society. And this is a high time that African scholars living in the diaspora should come back and embrace our culture. So basically that's it. So this is, this is a speak black to me moment. You heard clearly the idea, the voices of speaking black, speaking power to one's identity. You heard Andrew say that we cannot allow individuals to come into a space and give us loans because loans comes with conditions and conditions can also, also manipulate us and control our potentiality. You've heard uh, Bennett suggest to us that there is this necessity to come together in unity, in mind, in order to be able to facilitate uh, how the body flows. We understand that first of all, wherever the body is, the mind is let it be. The, the mind is first and the body is second. And when people can begin to control how we think, they can control what we do. Carter G. Woodson says that when you control a man's thinking, you don't worry about his actions. She said we must be in control of our thought processes. She also said that we must acknowledge the languages that we have uh, come into a space to learn because inside the language is not only words, but inside the language is vibration, is frequency, is life, is love. Inside the language is all that is important to the essence of life. So thank you all for this Speak Black to Me moment. Students from the University of the Gambia, uh, political science majors, uh, and they are destined to continue to make a positive and powerful impact on the country of the Gambia, but the world 
that we live in. Thank you. Thank you.